This is Healthcare's Missing Logic Podcast, episode number 168. We have a special treat for you today. Today, we interview Dr. Marion Ball and Tori Shaw Morosky. We talk about interprofessional leadership, innovative strategies, including what we've learned about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship, and a whole lot of other things. So don't miss it. Welcome back to Healthcare's Missing Logic Podcast. This is the only podcast that shows you how to leverage polarity intelligence, an essential competency for healthcare leaders and the missing logic in healthcare, so you can create healthy healing organizations and become a thriving, resilient, and unstoppable healthcare leader. We are your hosts, Tracy Christofferson and Michelle Troset. We've been best friends and colleagues for over 30 years. And during that time, we coached healthcare leaders across North America around how to create healthy healing organizations. Today, we coach healthcare leaders and leadership teams to live thriving, resilient, and balanced lives, combat burnout, and create the best places to give and receive care. This podcast is for the unsung hero of healthcare, the healthcare leader. We want you to know we see you and we'll be here for you each week. In this podcast, we're going to challenge healthcare's industry norms, flip limiting beliefs, and share proven strategies so you can be your best self at working at home, live and lead intentionally, and experience well-being and joy. We are glad you are here and look forward to sharing the journey with you. If you aren't totally convinced this podcast is for you, just listen to a few episodes and convince yourself. Well, hello, listeners. This is Michelle and Tracy, and welcome to another episode of Healthcare's Missing Logic podcast. Yeah, welcome. It's another wonderful day in the studio and yes. two additional wonderful guests that we were able to be with today. Yeah, we have two guests today. Two. Another dynamic duo. Yes. 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 They're Dr. Amazing. Marion Ball and Tori Shaw Morosky. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's who we had. <laughs> That's who we had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's been a long week, folks. <laughs> oh, what a delight. This actually was kind of like a dream come true to have these two on our podcast. Um, Marion's been a friend and a mentor of mine for many years, and working and knowing Tori's been just a delight, and they really are a dynamic duo together. They've done some phenomenal work together. They have, and they've known each other for quite some time now. And as you said, they developed a special relationship. I think they feed off each other kind of like we do, yes, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and support each other. And uh, and they have a new book coming out. They were editors in this incredible book, which we talk about. And, you know, it's just really delightful to be with them and to see the difference they're going to make in the world with this book. Yeah, I'm very I'm very happy for both of them and their fellow editors and and can't wait for all of you our listeners to read it. And this episode will give you some great insight into what the book is all about and why it's so important. And so let us introduce you to our guests. I'm going to introduce Marion, and Tracy's going to introduce Tori. So Dr. Marion Ball is an international innovator, educator, author, and member of the National Academy of Medicine with over 45 years of experience in healthcare IT, in the healthcare IT community. Her research focuses on health informatics, curriculum design, education, and enabling technology from theory into practice. Dr. Ball currently serves as the executive director of the Multi-Interprofessional Center for Health Informatics at the University of Texas in Arlington. She uh, continues to serve on many, many boards. Her leadership has been profound in healthcare and IT, and she is a founding member of the Technology Informatics Guiding Education Reform, or TIGER. Dr. Ball received numerous awards for her worldwide contributions and was named as one of the most influential women in health IT by HIMSS. Wow. Yeah. Go Marion. Go (laughs) Marion. And Tori is a global, she is a global program and people leader, DEI champion and network builder in healthcare, informatics, social work, and workforce development. Excuse me. She has over 15 years of experience directing programs, projects, and initiatives. That's why she's so powerful. Yes. 
Tori currently serves as a Senior Manager of Professional Development for the Healthcare Information and Management System Society, or HIMSS, where she oversees all programs, activities, volunteer efforts, and research for global health informatics students and professionals. She's executed the EUUS eHealth Work Projects Scope of Work and Deliverables funded by the European Commission on behalf of the HIMSS Foundation. Today, Tori also serves as the president of the board of directors for GIS, a member of the Multi-Interprofessional Center for Health Informatics, external advisory board, and an advisory committee member for the Summer Institute of Nursing Informatics, or CINE, conference. Yes. She's amazing. She is. They're both amazing, and you are going to love this interview. You are. So without further ado, here is our conversation with Marion and Tori. Yeah, and just uh, in case you're wondering what their name of their book was, oh. <laughs> it's Nursing Informatics, a Health Informatics Interprofessional and Global Perspective, and it's the fifth edition. So without further ado, here we go. Listen to this interview because it's awesome. Well, welcome, Marion and Tori, to Healthcare's Missing Logic podcast. We are so excited to have you both as guests today. So we have been waiting for this day for a very long time, ladies, and um, we know we could talk about so many things, but today we're going to be focusing on a new Springer book called Nursing Informatics, a Health Informatics Interprofessional and Global Perspective, the fifth edition book that you two were editors for, along with our colleagues. Ursula Ubner and Gabriella Wilson. And we're so excited about the book coming out. And the content in it is amazing. Um, we know that the role of informatics and technology is critical to the improve to improving the well-being of clinicians, the efficiency of the health system, and the safety of patients. And uh, it's loaded with great content. And of course, we'll also be talking a little bit about the chapter Tracy and I co-authored, uh, chapter 36, Interprofessional leadership and innovative strategies, and we want to thank both of you for the invitation to write a chapter in that book. So let's get started. We have lots to talk about, and before we start talking about the book, we would like our listeners to hear each of your voices, and we'd love to tell have you tell how you know each other. So Marion, I'm going to start with you and tell us how you know Tori. Well, I tell you, that's one of the best things that's ever happened to me is to be able to meet Tori, work with Tori, and to be able to move forward to really advance our field of health informatics. So we got, Terry and I already now go back for quite a while, and what has brought us together is Tiger. And as many of you probably on the cast, broadcast would know, Tiger stands for Technology, Informatics, Guiding Education Reform. So this goes way beyond just nursing. It goes onto a whole global aspect as how do we use enabling technologies to move our healthcare system, which we do not have, from a sick care system to a healthcare system. And we have been diligently working together for many years now, particularly since Tiger was brought under the umbrella of HIMSS long before that. You, Michelle, were working with us when we founded Tiger, and we had our first big working conference in Washington, D.C. in, would you believe, 2006. So this movement of seeing how we can use technology in the best possible way to help all of our health professionals, and that, let's say, battle that we are doing with the foot soldiers of health informatics and one of the soldiers who's at our side and we're fighting together is our dear Tori. So that's how I met Tori and will from now on she'll be part of my life forever. I can promise you guys that. So <laughs> that's how I met Tori. Oh, that is so great. Tori, tell us how you know Marion. Okay. Well, I actually met Marion at the same time as I met you, Michelle. Mm-hmm. Um, as Marion was um, introducing Tiger, Tiger transitioned from a standalone foundation into the HIMSS Enterprise <coughs> in September of 2014. So almost eight years. 
um, ago, I was hired to come on board and translate this incredible grassroots initiative into an interprofessional community initiative um, and also revitalize this virtual learning environment. Um, so Tiger, as an initiative and interprofessional community in HEMS today, provides the global health workforce with innovative informatics and e-health tools and resources to be able to transform health for all. Um, prior to stepping into this role, I had never heard of informatics, nor the two of you who are both so important, your legends in the nursing informatics field. So I think that was a blessing because I would have been so <laughs> intimidated stepping into this role if I knew the superstars that both of you were. Um, my professional background is in global health and workforce development with a focus on diversity, health equity, and inclusion. Um, so I, I'm so grateful that our paths crossed in this capacity. And as Marion said, we're going to be in each other's lives forever. I'm so grateful for the beautiful friendship that we've cultivated over the eight years. Yeah, that's terrific. And you two do have an amazing partnership. And uh, being part of the Tiger Initiative is really one of the highlights of my career. And, and to see, well, you know, Mary and you and I, we co-chaired the board for many years together. We would see each other once a week. And so we do have a tight connection and it has spread all over the world that we're going to hear about. And the books have always been a significant part. Now, Marion, you go way back with your book editing expertise in informatics, and you have a long history of, of informatics um, publications. So tell our listeners what's new and different about the focus of this fifth edition coming out. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. Actually, Catherine, Hannah, and I, Catherine would be, I would say, the lead and, and most respected nurse in Canada. And the two of us started the series with Spring Overlag in the late 80s. So this goes back a long time. And we put together the very first book, which was Introduction to, uh, Introduction to Nursing Informatics. And then the second one, which was, that was the, the primary one, like the Step one, and then we had nursing informatics where caring and technology meet, and that those two books uh, really started to launch an entire an interest in again how, having textbooks. The reason Kathy, Hannah, and I did this was there was no textbook material in those days. We were mimeographing handouts to give to our students to be able to understand and learn very basic aspects. So the exciting thing is with all of the books and, and the work that's come all along with that. So the fourth edition, actually, of Nursing Informatics, Where Caring and Technology Meet, was, the, the, was dedicated in many ways to the TIGER initiative. All of the work and the incredible conference that um, Michelle was the program chair of, where we had over... We had a hundred people, all of the major nursing informat and nursing specialties, the wound care nurses, emergency room, operating room, all of these people came together to really put together a three year and a ten year plan. The exciting thing is you're asking, so what's so special about the fifth edition? So as you can see, we've got within the series there are twenty, thirty books now because each has gone from one to another. But what's very important is that each edition is completely new, even though it holds the same title, which I wish we could change it a bit, but they are, every single book is, has a whole set of new chapters. There's no replication. So this last book and what makes this special and your um, answer, your question, Michelle, is that it has shifted from with the major focus on nursing to a whole aspect of multi-interprofessional, not only interprofessional, but global perspectives. Uh, I mean, with Tori's incredible leadership, we have something like, what is it, 32 um, international countries now? Or have I, we probably even have more, Tori. Who, how many do we have now that are, that we have international tigers, so to say? 
Yeah, there are over 100 volunteers today represented by 34 countries around the world. Um, and if I could just build on top of mm -hmm. what Marion is saying about this new special edition, um, the fifth edition takes on a textbook format and it draws upon the structure of competency areas in both nursing and health informatics derived from two Tiger informatics recommendation frameworks, as well as the American Association. Association of the Colleges of Nursing. Um, so the textbook now contains real life um, case studies and other didactic features that illustrate both theories and principles, making it really an ideal resource for use within both health and nursing informatics curricula at the undergraduate and the graduate level. Um, it's also going to be so important for multi interprofessional workforce development. And as Marion said, um, this edition does honor the format that was established by previous editions, with including a content array and questions that will guide the reader. Um, so I, I'm so... I'm so excited about this book because it's also one unique feature is the 360 degree stakeholder perspective, which wasn't included in any of the previous edition. And these stakeholder perspectives really provide insights into the view of each multi interprofessional team member, such as the patient, the nurse, the physician, the pharmacist, etc. I mean, you just you just put a wonderful frame about that, Tori. That was just perfect. And also just because it would be a lead way into the chapter that you, Tracy, and Michelle uh, contributed. Because, you see, there, too, it looked at a much broader aspect. When we look at polarities and we look at management, we look at how do we build consensus, how do we work with all of the aspects of all professions yeah. The whole chapter that you, uh, Michelle, will have to tell our audience about a little bit more, and you, Tracy. I mean, to me, it's really one of the key chapters also in the book because it really expands the knowledge of our audience to say, look, how do we become better managers? How do we use, how do we work with conflict resolution? How do we bring this and understand cultural differences? All of these things, the whole aspect of where our field has developed into, and then where do the enabling technologies come in? How does that fit in? And in referencing your wonderful colleagues, Bonnie, and the way that the two of you have evolved in providing this outstanding chapter. So, I mean, Michelle and Tracy, it fits in so well with what Tori has just said, the broad spectrum of this book, I truly think will have a major impact. And believe me, we've done over 23, 24 volumes. For me, I really almost think this is the cherry on the top of the ice cream of the best. <laughs> so well, your great. chapter is one of them. And I'm sure the audience here, I am being more of a manager to telling you what we should discuss. But I really <laughs> think Michelle and Tracy to explain what we mean. And it took me a while to to really digest the aspect of the power of that whole concept of polarities theory. So I'll keep quiet on that to answer about the books, but it's an exciting initiative. We have so far to go with trying to educate not only our students, but our faculty. And the faculty is in all health professions. I'm talking nursing, dentistry, pharmacy, rehabilitation, you name it, we've got to do it. Awesome. I'll keep quiet for the moment. All right. Well, Marian, before we dive into that awesome chapter that we wrote, <laughs> I want to hear a little bit more from Tori because we were so excited that you were added as an editor to this book and so thrilled to be able to work with you and certainly highly valued all of your support and suggestions. And, and I can see the energy that you have around it. So I just wondered if you could tell our listeners a little bit about what was that experience like for you, right? To be working with Miriam, to be an editor on this incredible book. I'd, I'd really like to know. <laughs> 
It was such an honor um, to serve as the editor for this important textbook and to serve as your chapter um, editor specifically. It's always wonderful to work with Michelle in different and new capacities. And Tracy, I got to meet you while working on this chapter. Mm -hmm. um, and my experience was really eye-opening in every way. In my current role, I really don't have a lot of time that I get to allocate to professional development. So this textbook served as the perfect vehicle to expand my knowledge base when it comes to all things informatics. Um, it provided a really deep understanding of the publishing world as well, and it opened my mind up to concepts and theories that I never heard of, such as polarity intelligence. Um, I also love that this fifth edition was significantly shaped by members of the Tiger Initiative. You know, Marion highlighted how a previous edition was dedicated to the Tiger Initiative. This edition brought together 30 Tiger active and emeritus volunteers, as well as pioneers, who contributed, such as yourself, who contributed to 25 of the 50 chapters. So wow. it was really a it was really wonderful for me to work with all of the volunteers and emeritus volunteers, pioneers in a new capacity. And through their contributions, this book really does feature a, a multi-interprofessional, intergenerational and global perspective, which is where Tiger's core vision resides. So, um, yeah, it was it was such an honor to be invited to take on this role. Yeah, oh, I'm so glad it was such an incredible experience for you. I know it was for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we want to just talk a little bit. We were just honored to be asked to write a chapter to begin with. And, and thank you for that. Um, and our chapter's Innovative Strategies for Interprofessional Leadership. And we covered a number of different aspects of innovation in that chapter. And so just so our audience kind of has a sense of what that is, I'll just highlight that real quick. So first was just needing innovative leadership, right? And the entrepreneurial and intrapreneurial opportunities that lie right in development and implementation of systems that support interprofessional collaborative practice was one of the aspects that we talked about. Of course, we talked about how critical it is to understand polarities and just when it comes to designing and implementing health information technology. Another aspect was kind of just the role of interprofessional shared governance. So where are we bringing the colleagues together? We talk about multi-interprofessional, right, um, knowledge, but they need a place to gather, right? So those governance councils really are that place, that learning lab, so to speak, right, and a way for them to engage in the ownership of, of the practice as well as the usability of the technology that they're implementing. Um, and then lastly, we talked about how to manage change from a polarity lens, and I think you alluded to that, Marion, right? Like to reduce the resistance, right? And to really have that collaborative approach and, uh, and to get the stakeholders engaged. And then, of course, we mentioned our dear friend and mentor, Bonnie Wasorek, and how she really was an entrepreneur turned entrepreneur uh, over time. And we shared her story and what that meant for, uh, for healthcare technology and interprofessional practice as well. Yeah. <clears throat> so visionary she was. Um, just way ahead of her time in looking and knowing we had to automate clinical documentation. It needed to represent professional practice. It needed to support the scope of practice of all professions. Partnering with HIT companies before a lot of other clinicians even, even thought about doing that. So it has been an incredible um, journey. And I just want to highlight one of the major polarities Tracy and I put in our chapter, um, and that is the, the polarity of the practice platform and the technology platform. And you need both. And mm -hmm. we knew that there was no way we could look at this as an either or, that they needed to be looked at at the same time, and we needed to get the best positive outcomes of technology and the best positive outcomes of practice. And um, Marion, you know, you were very visionary too, realizing we had to have informatics clinically. And we went through a big kind of lag in the beginning where um, there wasn't technology. That's where you were a pioneer. Like, we got to start talking 
talking about informatics. And then what happened is it was a slow start, right? And that was really a big reason even the Tiger Initiative happened. How do we make this mainstream? How do we do this integration? Um, and then we got hit with a firestorm with the High Tech Act, and we had rapid implementation of electronic health records, which we all celebrated. But then we also began to realize the technology was going in faster than what than it was being intentionally designed for the practitioners at the point of care. And that's why it's such a major polarity. And that came out in one of our Tiger Leadership Reports, and it's one that Tracy and I still engage in healthcare organizations when they want to create healthy healing work cultures. The technology practice platform is one we always take a look at because it does impact clinician well-being and just the burden of documentation if it's not designed right. And we know, and we know you to, to know, it's never going to go away. <laughs> Even though we have EHRs implemented everywhere pretty much now, this polarity will never go away, and it has to be intentionally leveraged by several stakeholders, the vendors, the the interprofessional team members, um, and also, you know, other stakeholders within the organization. So, and faculty and students. So it, it impacts everybody. Yeah. I think yeah. one of the things that was so um, powerful for me to understand on a, on a very high level of your chapter is to say, if you, if you can define, if you can solve a problem and you solve it and it's done, but that's one way of looking things. But what happens when you cannot do that? And to accept the fact that there is going to be a polarity, yep. you're going to have to work together to see that it's going to work with the understanding that you've just said, Michelle, that some problems are never going to be solved in the way that some other problems that it's going to be, you know, easy to say, yes, you know, we can go this way or that way. That, I think, was a, one of the real high points for me for also students to learn because yes. everybody thinks, well, things are black and white. It isn't that way. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the other things that came out of what you've just said, Michelle, is even to this day, part of why the importance of doing textbooks like we've just put together and the point that Tori made, this is really the first one that is defined as an actual textbook with, with uh, questions, with outcomes, with, death, with uh, case studies and all of those things. That, I think, is very important because we need to train the health professionals to be able to understand a piece of their future has to be how the technologies and how the tools will enable them to do better. And now industry, as you know, is hiring a lot of people because they understand you cannot just be an engineer and design the first early, early hospital information systems. And what happened, everything was a workaround where nurses were the experts on that because it wasn't fitting into their workflow. It wasn't doing a job to really help them. In many cases, the worst thing was it was hindering them to do the best job they can. And those kind of lessons come out very well also in your chapter. So I just wanted to highlight that as a Thank teacher, you. that this is very key for knowing that the leadership, the professors, not only the students have to understand that. Yeah, yeah, that's so important. And it's so important to learn that early, right? <laughs> In your yeah. career, rather than, you know, we all learned it on the back end, <laughs> experiencing <laughs> the downsides, right? But we want to prepare them. And that's what right. we felt was so important about our chapter is, as you pointed out, Miriam, to differentiate between what is a problem and what is actually a polarity. And what are, you know, what can what can be seen as contrary perspectives, but they really need each other. So it's not about choosing my perspective or your perspective or making the decision based on what I think or what you think, but recognizing when perspectives or points of views are interdependent and actually polarities, and then having the deep conversations to be able to understand those perspectives and the benefits of both perspectives so we can then get them. And that's really, I think, what the Shared Governance Council structures bring is that place to come away from the bedside and the stress of caring for patients to come together and say, what is my expertise? What is my perspective? What can I bring to the decision-making processes 
because I have a unique perspective as a nurse, as a respiratory therapist, as a pharmacist. There's a unique perspective as the informatician, right? The leader, everybody's got a different view, you know, of the situation and different perspectives, but we need to be able to engage in meaningful conversation and come to that shared purpose. What are we here to do in the first place, right? It's not about protecting my turf or your turf or having things my way or your way, but what's going to serve all of us and ultimately the patients and the communities that we serve, right? So we tried to bring forth, you know, when you're trying to leverage a polarity, you also, you know, you have to take simultaneous actions to get those positive outcomes and bringing the team together in that decision-making process about what are those actions going to be and then evaluating how successful they were, right? So it's really getting to the grassroots to own this, to engage in it, and to help it be designed in a way that is usable by all users, right? And um, and that's really what we brought forth. I think that's near and dear to our heart because we grew up in shared governance councils where we had that kind of power and that ability to contribute in a very deep way. And it's a practice field for relationship building across all of the interprofessional team members, across leadership and staff, and as well as with everybody that's on the informatics team, right, on the technology teams, so that they have those deep relationships and shared purpose, as well as skills of meaningful and deep conversation, too. So that's what we were trying to bring forth. Just to pick up on that, which is so powerful, competencies. And yes. that's where I think what Tori has done, she needs, she has to take the credit. I mean, which with the European Union aspect and to also define the competencies. And the, Tori, t- I think for the audience, what you contributed there is worth mentioning. Why don't, if, if I can be so sure. bossy again, my dear yes. Michelle, to have <laughs> Tori share the importance of that work because that has transformed a lot of thinking for all of us. And it it continues to transform our thinking. So, I mean, to date, Tiger has released two recommendation frameworks from our International Competency Synthesis Project. We surveyed stakeholders around the world. We brought together stakeholders at global conferences to really dive deep into what are the pain points, what are, what is the knowledge base that all, regardless of what clinical hat you wear, what core competencies do you need to be focused on when you're moving and upskilling, you know, going to conferences, diving into evolving your professional development. Um, So again, we've released two frameworks to date. Um, The first one, 1.0 is nursing centric. Um, Two years ago, we released 2.0, which is really geared at the multi interprofessional perspective, diving into what role, what level of education you come in at, and then provided a grid of core competencies that, um, that you can literally point to based on, again, what hat you're wearing, what level of education you have. And what I keep wanting to reiterate is it's not an important, it's not, it's more important to drive home the point of competency attainment. Everyone at this point, I think, is releasing competencies, but what do we do to handhold and ensure that people are, um, actually achieving at least part of those recommended competencies. So at this point, everything Tiger is doing, whether it's the textbook, um, a global health informatics course that we're working on getting to market, we're tying all of that material back to achieving each of these recommended competency areas. And we are also thinking about you know, we need a new competency grid for navigating the healthcare ecosystem living in a post-COVID world. Um, yeah. So that is one yeah. of the projects that Tiger will be working on coming into 2023. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, competency recommendations are fantastic, but it's also about all of us coming from different associations and sectors and getting on the same page when it comes to these core recommended competencies, because I don't think those discussions are happening a lot of us are creating competencies in silos yeah. um, and it's going to be really advantageous for us as a global community to come together. And I, I really do think that's what we did so well with the International Competency Synthesis Project is we did reach out to stakeholders across the aisle um, to gain their insights and and 
the, you know, anything they had to offer as we were putting together these recommendation mm. grids. Yeah. And I just well, would like to say that without the leadership of that whole initiative that Tori gave, we wouldn't be where we were. I mean, she really, she took that baton and she ran around the track and made it happen. So my hat's <laughs> off to you, know, Tori. That, that, and I think it, it was interesting that in parallel, Michelle, you were chairing the interprofessional organization that maybe people don't realize how powerful that was. You as coming from a nurse, understanding the concepts what we're talking about now and your long involvement, I think that those of those who might be listening to the uh, podcast, you should just say what you have done in that great. And Tracy, you just finishing your PhD again, hats <laughs> off to that too. Congratulations. <laughs> but Michelle, you, you made a big impact by chairing that committee. And uh, may, may, some people might not know about that. Well, thanks, Marion. Yeah, that's the interprofessional lens that we brought to the Tiger Initiative. And I remember standing up at the first Tiger meeting at Johns Hopkins in 2005 and said, if we're going to do this right, it needs to be interprofessional. <laughs> Took a while, but we got there, and which is really great. And of course, Tracy's been my sidekick partner with her leadership in interprofessional. And we brought that to Tiger after Tori arrived. And it is one of the eyes, like we like to say in Tiger now, is interprofessional. And and, um, and we got, um, when we talk about in our chapter, the National Academies of Practice, which is an interprofessional organization that mm -hmm. you mentioned, Marion. And you, um, you were the kingpin. Again, you're too modest. <laughs> uh, yes, I was president for a while, and we did yeah. actually do advocating um, on the Hill and with the ONC on uh, the importance of an interprofessional perspective. Uh, so everything, when you, when you look back, uh, Tracy and I do an exercise with um, the leaders that we coach that we have them reflect back. You can kind of see even in, with the four of us how everything is connected, and you can't yeah. maybe realize at the time, but we have, because we do have a shared purpose of improving healthcare from an informatics, interprofessional, professional practice perspective, you could, it's kind of cool to see how everything has evolved over time. And I'm glad you mentioned competencies because Tracy and I are very committed to making polarity intelligence a leadership competency. We believe without getting out of our mindset of everything's a problem, we will see the reoccurring issues in healthcare over and over again. So maybe on another podcast, we can talk about how to put these competencies together from a leadership <laughs> perspective. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I do want to dive a little bit back into your chapter, though, before we move on to the next question, because this chapter for me really did serve as a simplified guide and roadmap for embracing and integrating polarity intelligence. I mean, the model, the map, um, you can leverage this into an overall way of thinking and operating. And what really struck me is, you know, expanding the scope of polarity intelligence even beyond the healthcare ecosystem, because going back to competencies, this really is a transferable competency, regardless yes. of the sector or organizational type you find yourself in. It's a universal competency. And for me, it, what resonated was it's really a way of thinking, and, you know, mm -hmm. something needs to change into this way of thinking. I'm in the midst of completing a certified diversity practitioner program. And I really believe that polarity intelligence can assist with DEI initiatives to help organizations yep. create a more diverse, inclusive and equitable workforce. It can be leveraged in project management, program mm -hmm. development and design and so much more. Um, you know, embracing this way of thinking also serves as a core leadership competency that I I know you yeah. just um, yeah. were saying that because, again, it really does help to discern and make better decisions based on knowing the difference between what is a problem and what is actually a polarity. Having this common language and understanding for me is really a game changer for those in and outside of the global healthcare ecosystem. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, Tori. Yeah. Yeah. And I one of the things that's also so exciting about this fifth edition where your chapter is in, we have our, our two partners. I mean, we uh, uh, other two editors, I should say, to, to Tori and myself. I mean, Dr. Gabriella Wilson and Dr. Ursula Hubner, again, there. 
two people with super skills coming from completely different disciplines. Here we end internationally our senior editor, who, as you know, Ursula is at Osnabrück University, one of the full professors, and just recently also elected by him as one of the leading women in our field. So we have, and then of course, the tremendous contributions that uh, Gabriella, who's our co-director at the center here, she's come from an engineering biochemical, and she has a PhD in chemical engineering. I mean, all of these disciplines, which is showing you, and uh, uh, ironically, which is in a way so strange, none of the editors at the moment are nurses. Yeah, so I mean, by trade, oh, I am a social worker. Social um, so oh, talk I, about the multi-interprofessional I mean, perspective. Just the people who are now working together, how that it's, 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 you know, do it, not do as I say, do as I do. Well, we're doing it. So, <laughs> but also, I mean, to expand on this a little bit, even beyond that, what I love also about polarity intelligence and what is so needed is that it challenges us to rethink the traditional change management process in theory. Um, there's a yes. quote that says a key strategy is leading change, leveraging polarity to engage all stakeholders, especially yep. those that are resistant to the change. And the resistance really is where the deep understanding of where the polarities reside are. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think for a change management um, model, this is also really incredible. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's so well put, Tori. And if you think about just the four of us on the screen right now or on this podcast, though two who are nurses, we all are, if nothing more, honorary nurses in that we all think the same way <laughs> and we're also globally <laughs> interprofessional individuals. So, I mean, yeah. we've been able to make a blending something that's unique, even in your podcast, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, this, and as you can see, we love it. We just thrive in being able to talk about it and realize that we hope that over time we make a real change by putting textbooks like this into the yes. field where people can learn the kind of things that you've just described, Tracy, that you've been standing for, Michelle, all these years. And I mean, here, Tori, bringing this from a professional organization and from a social, that social work is her background. And mm -hmm. having spent so many years in Africa and her work in the field, I mean, all of that comes together to blend into People who just want to make a change and, and <laughs> polarities are something we need to do. Uh, that just is the commonality. We all want to yeah. make a difference regardless of the hats um, yeah. that we're wearing. And, and that's exactly. the beauty of this, too. Yeah. Is the well, also together. yeah. Well, yeah. and that's, you know, what you did in your book is bring people together with differing perspectives, points exactly. of view, expertise that want to make a difference, right? So it's really a compilation of all of that, right, is just represented yeah. in the book. Yep. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah. I mean, now, so for our listeners, I think if you recall, the first thing I said is we could talk about a lot of things today. <laughs> This is exactly what I mean. Oh, you get these passionate people together that want to change the world, and we could go on and on for there hours. <laughs> yeah. It is, though, that time in our podcast for the missing questions. So these are questions that we're going to ask you now, Tracy, and I just have a few questions to throw at you so our listeners can get to know a little bit about Marion and Tori uh, in a different way. They're fun questions, so just relax. And um, I am going to start with the first question um, is, as world travelers, what is the most favorite country you've ever been to? And Marion, I will have you start. Well, since I just came back from Germany, and it's my heritage, and we did a uh, roots trip with for my brother's 80th birthday, at the moment, I would say it's Germany. Thank you. Uh, Wonderful. Uh, Tori, how about you? Sorry. 
I was muted. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Well, I have been to 34 countries. I just counted them all up and um, it's so hard for me to choose, but I would say Namibia and Africa is one of the most incredible places I've ever been to. It's the Kalahari Desert. It's um, It was colonized by the Germans. So it one of the languages is German. It feels like um, Germany in like the sand dunes. So um, <laughs> very eco-conscious, uh, eco-centric, eco-friendly. So it, it's an incredible country to visit. Well, Tori, that's so ironic, you know, because I couldn't decide, is it South Africa where I was born or Germany? And now you brought them together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Small oh, that's great. <laughs> We're connected at the hip is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's at the soul level myself. <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. Okay, here's the second fun question. Who's the most famous person you've ever met? Marion, how about you? Oh my goodness, most famous person. I mean, fame, what do you, how do we define fame? You know, the, the probably the most famous people in my life are those that have been mentors to me. I've I worked for many years with Dr. Morris Cullen who, as you know, founded the entire Kaiser Permanente Mm -hmm. aspect of patient care. He was one. I'm very fortunate to have had a famous father who's the founder of American, well, international sports medicine. Then also having has as a mentor, uh, Dr. Uh, Lindbergh, who was the director of the National Library of Medicine. I have been blessed with such incredible mentors so to choose just one was a little hard but thank you for asking michelle sure sure tori um from a hollywood perspective i got to meet halle berry during my undergraduate degree i worked at united airlines and she was on one of my flights and she was had no makeup on she was so beautiful natural down to earth and so kind Um, But I guess if I'm thinking about giants in the field, I do want to highlight that I feel so fortunate that I got to meet and work with Dr. Virginia Saba, who is the developer of the clinical care classification system, a giant in the nursing informatics field, known for her pioneering work in computers and nursing. But I had the honor, actually, of updating a Tiger Focus chapter that Michelle, you originally worked on in Dr. Saba's last book, the seventh edition of The Essentials of Nursing Informatics, which was published in December of 2020. So I I feel very fortunate that I got to meet her before her passing and work with her. Yeah, great. That's Mm. wonderful. Mm. Wow. Awesome. All right. Now we're on to the last question. Okay. So this is our wrap up question. And and we've been talking about polarity intelligence all the whole time, right? But what we know about polarities is oftentimes we have a preference for one pole a little bit more than the other. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just our natural tendency where we want to lean a little bit more into one pole or the other. And so what I want to do is ask you, given this specific polarity, what is your preference pole? So intent or impact? And we'll go with you first, Tori. That's such a good question. Um, I think impact, impact for me, um, because I think we all want to leave this world in a better place than where we found it. Um, So I think my legacy is really trying to impact everyone who crosses my path to really make an impact and um, pave the way for those who come behind me. So impact. Awesome. And Marion, how about you? Well, uh, for many, many years, I've always, as you know, thought the importance of the field is how do we take theory into practice? So if that's my mantra, it has to be the impact part. So I would Mm -hmm. think that it's wonderful to have the ideas and the concepts, but if it doesn't make a difference at the point of care, in the classroom, and the workbench and research, to me, you haven't achieved it. So I ditto everything that Tori said. If we leave this world, we'd like to feel we made a little bit of a difference that was applied. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Oh, Thank you. That's <laughs> great. That's great. Yeah. 
Oh, well, thank you both so much. This has been such an inspirational interview. It was a little bit of walking down memory lane, um, and I just am leaving this interview with such gratitude for both of you, for your leadership and wanting to make an impact in the world. And I think um, it just was a wonderful opportunity to highlight your latest work coming out in this book, which will benefit many students, faculty, and practitioners in the field. So. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much for inviting us to come and spend time with you. I mean, it's work, but it's always such a joy and it's so much fun. And I love walking down memory lane with all of you and Tracy work, you know, being with you in this different capacity too. I'm, I'm so grateful for this invitation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're so and welcome. Just parting words. I would just like to say your many podcasts of which I listen to many of is such a contribution to the field. So Hats off to you and keep going. And thank you for letting us be part of your podcast family. Oh, you're so welcome. And thank you for being one of our number one fans, Marion. <laughs> and I'm number two. <laughs> and you're number two, Tori. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm so glad you are both here to share this incredible work that you're doing. Yeah. And I can't wait for the release of the book. I want to read all the other chapters. <laughs> so, thank you for your thank significant you. contribution and for being here with us today. Thank you all. Have a good yeah. rest of the day. Yeah. yeah. For our listeners, this is another wrap up of Healthcare's Missing Logic podcast. You stay safe and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Healthcare's Missing Logic podcast, now a top rated podcast for healthcare leaders. Please share this podcast with other healthcare leaders and anyone else you think would benefit. We are certain that if you found value in it, they will too. If you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any episodes. And also, it would mean the world to us if you took a quick moment to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast player. It helps to get the word out about our podcast and incredible guests. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to watch our podcasts. You can also follow us on our Missing Logic social media channels, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time.